actually when you need to uh, re uh, know the islam you should uh, separate between the religion principle and the history and the cultural rules uh, and if you uh, uh, start to read the history of Islam, you will find Islam has been changing across history. And when you start to ask yourself why this changes, why there is difference uh, across ages, uh, so we should uh, go first to the uh, how it started. Islam was actually um, uh, an evolution of religion. You know, everything has an evolution. I see it as an evolution uh, of the religions that started from polytheism to monotheism, and the monotheistic religion started to evolve. It started from Judaism, then to Christianity, then Islam. Uh, uh, Islam came with liberation. It's liberation from the authority of religious men and the liberation of women. They can uh, have uh, 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 separate from men, they can marry whatever. Uh, so it was very liberal from the start. If you read the history of Prophet Muhammad, it started as a liberal. And after, after being liberated, the start changes by the cultural rules and the history. Uh, you know, there is a problem in religion that uh, it's being used by the authority across across ages. There is um, uh, what we call uh, a hidden connection between the authority and the religion. Any authority needs a religious man to control people, to have the taxes from them, and without without uh, being uh, uh, opposing them. And any religious authority uh, needs an authority at uh, the king, the king, because they want to have more uh, authority on the people. So there are a hidden deal between the religious authority and uh, the political authority. And this has been manipulated even in Islam. So you trust your Imam, so you go after him, whatever he go. He raised the slogan, go fight for them, and uh, that's it. So the problem in, in, in Islam that you mix between what, uh, the religious authority, the religious uh, principle, and the history and the culture and the political background. This is our problem. We started to make the rules, uh, the historical rules, as a holy one. This is the problem. There are basic principles, a way that uh, are very good, but there are many ideas that passed across ages, and these ideas that passed across ages become divine or holy, and we cannot change these ideas. We cannot even think outside these ideas. Many people see Islam as a very aggressive religion because of this history. Actually, it's not the Islam, it is about the people who adopt this, uh, use it to recruit people for wars. So, what I see in Islam, it's a more liberal one. It gives you the freedom to choose. It is not dogmatic. It liberates you from the authority of religious people, the religious uh, men. And, however, it tends to be changing now because most people like to be followers. Most people like to be follow someone. So, they start to choose someone to make them Imam and they start to obey him. In Islam, actually, it, you have a direct connection to And this is the most important thing. No one, no one have an authority on you. You have a direct connection to, to the God. It's about being honest. It's about how to deal with people. I think Islam is about how to deal with people rather than how to impose the, your thoughts about the other. Actually, I, 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 we should not impose our ideology on the other, whatever it is ideology. It's for me, it's uh, like a relation between me and God. Uh, if you need my help, I, I will help you regardless who you are. So it's about how to treat people as human, how to help them, how to make, be peaceful to them, how not to threat them. The name of us, Islam, is about peacefulness. Being a Muslim is to be helpful to the, your society. Actually. I, I belong to um, a third world country. Uh, our society is uh, being manipulated a lot. They are, there are a lot of poverty, a lot of ignorance in our society. And I think being a Muslim is to help them, uh, help them grow.
For example, in, in my career, uh, it's, it's, it's important for me to educate. Each one of us has his duty. God give him something to do. And for example, uh, some people have a duty to give money for the others. Others have duty to teach the, the others, make them aware about their life, about uh, what they're going to do. So I think in my place as a doctor, God gave me a, a place that I can help people in different ways. For example, I can treat them, I can teach them how to see life, I can teach them how to be a good doctors. I have different ways to teach them. So being a Muslim is just to educate. This, this is my, my vision. Okay. I see that following the rules of Islam are not enough for you to be a good Muslim. They are, you are following the rules that you will not change, you will not do any change. Uh, for example, if I go to the mosque five times a day for 20 years, I will not change. This is not enough. The rules are only just you to make you stable, just stabilize your brain, stabilize your soul. But they are not enough to be good to the community. If you want to go be good to the community, you need to add. Go, uh, going strict to the rules will, it will help you only, but it will not help you the others. So if you want to help the others, you should start to go beyond the rules. So you should add. If you want to add in your job, you want to add in your practice, if you want to add in whatever, you should have to add to the others beyond the rules. So it's about giving. So you should give. You can give money, you can give time, you can give knowledge, you can give whatever, but you should give. Rules are not enough to be in contact. You should read a lot. You should have time to meditate uh, to reach to the God. You know, you can see Islam in different way. You can Islam of rules, Islam of spirituality, Islam of philosophy. You can see it in different way. See, some people adopt the simplest way, the Islam of rules. Some people adopt a more spiritual way. Others adopt the more philosophical way. They try to, each one has his road to the God. But you should reach the road that satisfy you. For example, I, I am not fanatic Muslim. I don't like to be fanatic with each rule. Each rule, eh, some people are so fanatic, so rigid in, in, in the rules. There is, uh, I think there is a lot of flexibility in Islam. Islam is, a, is a flexible, the God is flexible. It's not, it's, uh, he's not so rigid. So it is about our vision about this rule and about uh, the Islamic uh, religion. So we can reach the God to, uh, by reading about the, uh, the previous experience, those spiritual experience, those philosophical experience about God. At the end, there is an important thing about the Islam. Any religion is has uh, an important role in controlling your aggressive brain, you know. We humans have a, a beast inside us called the reptile brain. This is a survival machine. It's about war and aggression and fighting. This, this machine is, is uh, activated only when uh, there is threat on survival, called the reptile brain. So as a human, you tame this beast and you start to work in a human way. Uh, this is how I see the basic tenet of any religion, any religion. And, and Islam came by this, you should tame yourself, tame yourself to avoid the basic principles, to tame the basic principles. You should uh, with st with, with whole, uh, with stand uh, against hunger, against uh, thirst, against even abstain sex. It's okay for us as long as I'm helpful to the, to the group. So. Any religion promote the altruistic behavior of a, the individual inside a group and make the group is homo homogenous. So, and we group of peoples are like the individual cells in the human body. We should cooperate together. So if I only stop at the level of the rules, so it's, it's at the level of the individual, I didn't add to the whole, whole of the community. And the value of, of Islam is to build yourself to be a good individual and to add to the group. And if you didn't add to the group, you are not real Muslim. So it, being a real Muslim is to tame yourself first and to add to your community, whatever it is, and whatever the religion of the others.
in Islam, we accept Christianity, we accept Judaism, uh, regardless of political conflicts, but uh, as a religion, we accept all and we recognize them as, as uh, our uh, partners, pray to the same God in different way, it's okay. In Islam, basically, there is, in Quran says, we should accept. We should accept the other religion, the Christians and Muslims and the Jews, regardless what what they think. And we should respect how they pray to the God, and we should not do uh, whatever to them. Any civilization has a, has a life cycle. At the rise, it starts rapidly. It starts to adopt science and it has a, like a take off, then it has a plateau phase, then it decay. And we are now at the stage of the fall of our civilization, not of the Islam. It's very important. We have less resources, we have more poverty, and the people with less resources, more poverty, are escaping to God, became more rigid to the rules. So they think that if they are committed to the rules very well, so everything will be okay. This is not enough. Committing to the rules is not enough to solve everything. Committing to the rules is enough only to tame yourself, but it's not enough. You should add to the society. You should, should work a lot. You should change themselves, you should change the others, you should change their community. This is not about Islam. This is a, a mental error. It's about how brain perceives things. We, we are attentive to certain things and ignore certain things. This is basic in our perception as a human brain. In Quran, for example, when we read it you, for the first time, you are atten uh, attentive to something and you ignore anything. And we read it a second time, you are attentive to other things. Each time you read it, you have another attention, another dimension. So it depends how you see, perceive things. So it's about the perception of the Islam, how you perceive God. It's a human nature. It's not, it's not the religion. The way we perceive God in Egypt is different from, for example, in Europe, is different from Morocco. It, it's stained by the culture itself. Uh, the culture has a, a great impact on our perception of God. Uh, I can talk about Egypt. Uh, Egyptians are very conservative uh, regarding religion, any religion. They are so conservative in Christianity. They are so conservative in Islam. So they perceive it conservatively. Others can perceive it more liberally. It's, it's, not, it's not the religion. It is the cultural background that has an impact on the, on the way we perceive things. So the two billion people are different because there is different geographical location, different experience, different perception of this ideology. The Islam is a complex ideological construct. It's not simple. It's a complex ideological construct. So if you adopt this construct, you can only adopt what is suitable for you and you, you ignore what is not suitable for you. But we are all, we are all uh, agree on the basics principles of Islam. Mm, I talk to the people, good, good, you should not hurt them, you should not steal, you should not lie, you should not, uh, you should treat them well, and and everything will come to you without without uh, fight and without uh, breaking the rules. The Islam came to liberate women from the patriarchal control. There is an urge in the patriarchal world to control women. This is an urge. This is a nature. It's not, it's not a religious. This is a nature, a nature in the males to control women. So they started to use any rules to control women. Why they should control women? This is across history. About 6,000 years ago, when there is patriarchal coup on women, Women were were highest level than men before Merdukh in Iraq. And the more the gods were matriarchal. But later on they start to have a patriarchal gods. Why? The problem if you, we go more deep, men are always secure insecure about their women. And so they put rigid rules to control. Most of the rules of our community is about a man control, patriarchal control on women. And this is what happening even in, in Islam. They 
use the religious terms to have more control on women by different means. So it's not different from any movement across history. Uh, so uh, that's why we should separate uh, uh, the Islamic liberation of women that started in the first 150 years, I think. But what came next? What came next? There is need for more control of women. And according to each culture, each culture put in rule its rule on controlling women. As you, you ask my question, they have different ways. Each, each, the two billions, each has his own vision of God. So they have different roads to the God. So we have Sunnah, Shia, we have different, we different, even, even uh, in, in each Sunni and Shia, there are different subdivisions. Each has, uh, and this is the problem of categorization, uh, labeling. The problem is the labeling and the mental categorization. When you start to mentally sub subdivide into uh, partitions, this means you start a mental war. This is valid for Christians, for any religions. So the problem in the human mind is that is the mental categorization. I start to categorize you as Muslim Sunni and Muslim Shi and uh, Muslim Shi is uh, Ismaili and Jafari and Muslim Sunni is uh, Hanbali uh, or uh, Salafi or Sufi. So I start to categorize and uh, this categorization starts the mental trick of us and them. I belong to this group and I start, you belong to this group and we start to have small fights and these fights enlarge and they are actually fighting rather than cooperating. So the problem is mentality, it's not, it's not religion. For a good Muslim, he should beyond, be, go beyond labeling. It's a problem of labeling. I label you as Muslim Sunni, Muslim Shi, I label you as a Christian. You should deal with him as a human rather than deal with him as by his label. Uh, the, it's, it's, this is a simple mental trick. Don't label others. Don't label. Just deal with him as a human. So if you deal with him as a human, regardless of his label, you are a good Muslim. You know, raising a flag or slogan or labeling, raising a flag of a cult or labeling a cult is very dangerous. I, I don't like this. You should act as a Muslim without his, I'll give you an example like Muhammad Salah. He's acting like a Muslim without raising the flag of a Muslim. He doesn't, he never raised the flag of a Muslim. But in other cults, you go, you raise a flag of a Muslim, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, and you do, you don't do a good deeds. You only raise the flags. This make people feel you as a stranger. Don't use labels, flags, slogans. Just do good acts without labeling. The manipulation used now uh, uh, is raising a slogan and you, you, uh, this slogan in, uh, uh, will attract those frustrated people to follow it, to direct their frustration against something. So this is a very important because many Muslims are now uh, in a poor countries. They are so frustrated. They are a very, very, very uh, good tool for uh, fanatism. So if you raised a good slogan, religious slogan, they will follow it. And the other mental trick is trust. Uh, you know, the problem of any religion that you trust every, anything related to the religious people blindly. You give your brain to them and you follow them blindly. So we have two mental tricks, the slogan and the trust. So uh, it's a very important not to trust any authority you should think you should not be 100 percent obedient you should uh, because they are uh, humans like us you should think a lot before you do an act uh, you should not follow any slogan before uh, blindly and this is this is what's happening in the uh, fanatic groups uh, in any fanatic group they have the amir or the imam of a fanatic group the followers trust him blindly, they are ready to follow him to the hell and do a lot of bad deeds uh, without thinking. And when they start to wake up, they, they found themselves they have done a lot of bad deeds. They are serving the Satan, not, not Islam. A lot of people are good followers. They want to follow the rules only. I told you we should go beyond the rules. So. You have the freedom, God gave you the freedom to, uh, to do whatever. 
you'll be uh, what we call bait for this if you are good or, or bad in the other life i'm not so so deep into religion i'm not a man or not but when i'm uh, i take a decision i should search myself and find is it suitable for me or not suitable for me will it hurt others or not hurt others if it it will not hurt others and i'll take the responsibility in front of god i'll take the responsibility in front of god People are afraid because they are emotionally are emotionally linked to these, these ideals, emotionally attached. So uh, they are so emotionally attached to the ideology uh, and so they are afraid to hurt this ideology a lot. So they don't want to think outside this frame because they, they don't want to do something that turns out rage. For, 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 for example, When someone insults Islam, there are two reactions. Some people keep silent, it's okay. This is vision. Other people turn outrageous. Depends, this depends on how they are emotionally attached. I, I told you before that, that Islam is important to stabilize the reptile brain. It's very important. So when you stabilize the reptile brain, you start to work with the human brain affected by the reptile chaos. This is how the mechanism, so the human brain starts to work without the signals from the reptile mind to have pleasures. You are satisfied internally, you are calm internally, so it starts to think clearly. I'll give you another example from history. You know, you know, assassins, the occult of assassins, it's an Islamic cult, but they use sex and drugs to, to control people you know, the combination of religion, sex, and drugs. It's like ISIS now. ISIS now, combination of religion, sex, and drugs. They stimulate the reptile brain to make the people outrageous, more so aggressive to kill. So people will not go to the level of this aggression without stimulating this reptile brain. So you can use religion to recruit more followers, give him, reward them with sex, reward them with drugs, more pleasure, so more reptile brain activation, not taming it. So, and you follow the leader because he's, this is a religion, a religious attitude, and you are rewarded by more sex and more pleasure. So you're turning to a, another reptile, not a human. They, when I pray every day, I should, I should, remember God, so I start to treat myself, so uh, am I, have I done good to the others, have I done good to myself, have I controlled myself, why I was angry today, why I, I spoke to someone in a polite way, why I should, I should have a more control on myself. This is how Islam makes us controlling, but actually people only do the rituals and forgot the, the main spirit of Islam that it's, it's about taming yourself rather than taming the others. We do more taming to the other, not taming ourselves. Well, it, to raise awareness is to uh, give the others your wisdom. It's, you should teach the others. If you cannot tell them, you should show them the way. Just show the others the way. The awareness is based mainly on transmitting with the wisdom because people in the young age uh, uh, are so narrow-minded, they uh, only see next to their step. Now, you start to teach people to have a vision. You start to see next later on, for five years uh, later, and for 10 years, and for 20 years, you should have this vision. So to see this, you should teach them, give him the way, your wisdom, and to let them read history. You need to read about civilizations, about uh, societies. Uh, you should not take anything for granted. If you, if you found something you don't like, you should search for it. Don't accept anything as see, being for granted. Just think, you have only some axioms, hold on it, and whatever is coming in the coming years, you should hold your axiom, don't change. You are on the right way, 
but you should resist peacefully. Give more awareness to the other, uh, help them and resist peacefully, and you should not change in the face of events.